If your baby was born with assistance, for example using a suction cup, then they may have developed a swelling on their head in the shape of the suction cup. This is known as a cephalohematoma, and in this video we'll cover what a cephalohematoma is, how common it is, and what makes your baby more likely to get one, we'll see an example of what one looks like, we'll discuss whether treatment is needed, and finally we'll cover some of the complications. As ever, if you learned something new in this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel for weekly medical education videos. So let's start off this video by discussing what it is. Well, a cephalohematoma is where the blood collects between a newborn scalp and the skull. Now I know this word sounds complicated, so let's break it down to make it more understandable. Cephalo refers to the head, and hematoma means blood that pulls outside blood vessels. And you can see an illustration representing the anatomy of this on screen now. Now this type of birth injury occurs when pressure on a baby's head ruptures blood vessels in the scalp. The blood then pools beneath the scalp and it forms a soft bulge that eventually hardens or calcifies. The lump often shrinks in the center first, which can cause it to have a ring-shaped or crater-like appearance. So just how common is it? Well, from the data that's available, it's thought that cephalohematomas occur in about 2.5% of prolonged difficult vaginal deliveries. If a lady has an assisted delivery that needs vacuum extraction, or forceps, then this raises the risk to about one baby in 10 that's delivered this way. Now, there are other factors which increase the risk of a newborn having a cephalohematoma. The biggest one, like we've already mentioned, is an assisted delivery using vacuum extraction or forceps, but others include epidural pain relief during childbirth, having a long labor, having larger than average babies, known as fetal macrosomia, weighing more than eight pounds, 13 ounces, as well as multiple babies, so twins, triplets, etc. So now let's take a look at some examples of a cephalohematoma. And here you can see this baby in these photos, which were taken three to four days after delivery, the cephalohematoma is on the back left side of its head. Now you can see this particular cephalohematoma has taken the exact form of a suction cup, and that's because this baby was delivered using a suction cup or one two delivery. In the majority of cases, the diagnosis is made clinically by the doctor assessing the baby. However, in rare cases where the medical team might be concerned about a skull fracture, then imaging might be requested. And here you can see a series of MRI or magnetic resonance imaging scans with an infant with a cephalohematoma. Now many people ask, does it need treatment? The most common answer to this is no, and that's because it's often harmless. The bruising or blood buildup should go away without treatment in a couple of weeks or months. Finally, what are the potential complications of a cephalohematoma? Well, the good news is that the vast majority settle down within a few weeks or months with no long-term complications. Now, very rarely there can be some complications. These include anemia, so a drop in red blood cells. That's because a cephalohematoma can take blood away from the baby's circulatory system. They may also develop calcifications, and that's because cephalohematomas that last more than five weeks may form hardened bone deposits, known as calcifications, around the mass but this is rare. They also lead to infections. A cephalohematoma is more prone to infections, and again, this is very rare. Another potential complication is jaundice. As a baby's body absorbs the blood from the cephalohematoma, bilirubin levels in the bloodstream can rise, causing jaundice. Your baby may have a yellow tint to their skin or eyes, and the healthcare professional who's looking after the baby will monitor this. The baby may also have a skull fracture. As many as one in four babies with cephalohematomas have a linear skull fracture. Now, whilst this might sound alarming, this doesn't move the bones in the skull. A linear fracture will usually heal over time without treatment. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you found it useful, please do consider leaving a comment in the comment section, and why not check out another popular video on my channel, which is what croup sounds like in newborn babies. This is a really common issue that affects infants, and hopefully hearing the sounds will make you more aware of what to possibly expect and better prepared if your baby's affected by this. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.